What is going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Docker on a Windows machine. And I'm also going to show you the instructions for Linux and Mac as well. Um, so this is part two of three of a Docker series I'm doing. So if you haven't seen the first video, go and check that one out. I'll put a description down below. Uh, but in this video, we're going to show how to uh, download and install Windows. Uh, so here I am on the Docker website. I just typed in uh, Docker desktop. Let's actually just do that. I'll show you exactly what I did. Uh, so Docker desktop, uh, clicked that, and then I just clicked on uh, the first entry here. So Docker desktop for Mac and Windows. Uh, so we click on that guy and it brings us to the download section. So uh, hover over this guy. It should auto detect what um, operating system you're on. Uh, so if you're on Mac, you should get the stable version. Uh, if you're on Windows, get the stable version as well. And if you're on Linux, if you click on uh, View Linux Engine, it brings you to this other link where it specifies the um, distribution specific uh, files that you'll need to install Docker. Um, so going back, I am on Windows and I'm going to download the uh, stable version of Windows. Um, for Docker for Windows rather. And I'm just going to let this download run its course. I'll fast forward this right now. All right, so this finished downloading. Going to click on this guy. Should automatically launch the installation wizard for Docker Desktop. Uh, going to click on run here. And okay, so here we go. So uh, this is the first page of the configuration. Uh, so you need to make sure that this box is checked here. Enable Hyper-V Windows features. Ensure that this box is checked. Uh, if you don't do that, you're gonna have some problems when you're actually trying to launch a container. And then you can obviously choose if you want it to add it to desktop or not. At that point, I click OK. And this is gonna take a good few minutes. So I'm gonna fast forward this again right now until it's done. All right, guys, so the installation finally finished here. Let's click on close. Uh, we can close this uh, Windows, uh, sorry, this Chrome browser now as well. Um, so let's do some sanity tests. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just double click on Docker desktop. Uh, make sure this thing is opened. If you see my bottom right here in my tray section, now we have an indicator saying that Docker is starting. If we right click on this guy and go to, uh, where is it, dashboard, uh, this should bring up the kind of launcher screen. Um, so here we go. So um, this is going to kind of walk us through a um, tutorial or just a um, startup step here. But let's just do some sanity tests before we do this, just to make sure everything is installed correctly. Um, I'm going to press the Windows key on my keyboard, type CMD, uh, go to command prompt, and let's just run Docker really quick to make sure it's working. Okay, so um, it looks like a variable automatically got appended to our path. Um, so that we can run Docker from CMD, so that's good. Uh, so if you ran into trouble at this step, let me just show you really quick how to uh, add the Docker um, bin or the Docker file to your um, CMD here so that you can run it using that command. So press the Windows key, type in environment variables, uh, or I typed in ENVI, click on this guy. Uh, and then we're gonna go down to the bottom right here and click on environment variables. And then in this section, in the section down here rather, um, for system variables, hopefully this stops blinking, thank you. Um, go down and you see the section path, click on edit. And then at this point you should have, well, if you had problems, uh, you won't have these two entries. The C program files, Docker, Docker resources, and bin, and the same one for Docker desktop down here. So if you had trouble installing, go ahead and add these two paths to your environment variables by clicking on new, and then just putting in exactly what I have here. And then go ahead and click on okay. Uh, click on okay again. And at that point, you can go back into command prompt, type Docker again, and everything should be set up and working correctly. Um, so at this point, we're just gonna do the tutorial here to ensure that everything is good to go. I'm gonna click on start. So the neat thing about this is that we can just click this command here and then it'll run in my terminal. Um, so we're just gonna clone a repository like this is saying, clicking on that guy. Okay, it ran the command, next step. Uh, we're going to CD and build the Docker 101 tutorial um, image. So we're going to click on this guy. And we're seeing here some downloads are happening. And then there should be a build step. Um, okay, we're downloading some more dependencies. If this takes too long, I'll fast forward it, but let's see. Alrighty, so that took quite a while to pull all those dependencies, uh, but it did succeed. So let's move on to the next step, clicking on this guy. Uh, so at this point, it's asking us to basically launch a container on port 80, um, and it's called the Docker 101 tutorial. So I'm going to click on that, 
and we can see that the container has been launched. Uh, so there's a couple of ways to verify that. Um, you can actually keep on going. Let's let's go through this tutorial first before we verify it. Uh, the next step here is just uploading um, your image here that you kind of created as part of this tutorial and then pushing it to the repository. I'm uh, gonna click on that guy and then it's uh, gonna push it up into the cloud at this point. Um, so at this point you're done. There's not really much left to do. Um, so you can use Docker to build and create Docker files. Uh, let's just go and test everything. Okay, so here we go. So we see that our container uh, is running successfully and we can click on this guy and it'll go to uh, localhost. So we can see that it is being hosted now or this web page is being hosted off of our local Docker container. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out part three, which is the next video. And that's gonna be how to build a Docker image that contains a MongoDB and Node.js application. So check that video out, I'll put that on the right here. And as always, if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.